Hi, Andrew here. Today we're going to take a look at something a little different. It's a 223 62 grain power strike. And this is a little unconventional projectile design. Uh, from the outside, it looks just like any other OTM or open tip match or boat tail hollow point or what have you. It is a copper jacket and has an open tip, but inside it's not lead, it's sintered copper. And I've seen some of these other type of, I've seen sintered copper, I've seen frangible bullets in other calibers and other designs a lot. And generally speaking, they tend not to perform terminally very well. The purpose of using sintered copper in projectile design is usually for frangible bullets, which are really intended for safely shooting steel at close range, not so much for terminal performance. And when companies try to apply that to terminal performance, it usually doesn't turn out that great. However, this one is a little bit different than the way a lot of the others have been executed, so possibly it may do well. Let's get out to the range. We're gonna shoot it out of my 10 and a half inch ARFCOM upper into calibrated 10% ballistic gelatin. Let's see what happens. All right, let's take a look. At first glance, looks all right. Penetration looks about on. Let's see, 12.7 inches. Not bad. There's, oh, maybe, yeah, half an inch of neck. The disruption in the gel from the temporary stretch cavity is about eight and a half inches long by three inches wide. Lots of fragments coming off of here. Looks like, hard to say, but it looks like all that's left here is just the jacket. Looks like we had the same kind of rangeable performance in here where it just kind of turns to dust, but there are a couple of big chunks here and Overall, I mean, it, it does look like it did some pretty decent temporary stretch cavity there, so I'd say that's pretty, pretty good performance. Let's get in there and see what's left of this. That's kind of sharp. That's mangled up real good, and as I suspected, that is just the jacket left. <laughs> but that uh that's a lot of jacket. Oh, you know what? No, I'm I'm mistaken. There is still some centered copper inside of it. It may be difficult to see on video right now. But we'll get some photographs when I get home that you can see. Maybe I can get a little closer here. Not sure if the light's going to cooperate for you, but there is some centered copper still in the base of that bullet. So, pretty decent. All right, well, color me surprised. Um, it did well. Uh, it had adequate penetration, a nice big temporary stretch cavity. The retained mass was small, but reasonable and consistent with, uh, say, a heavy OTM, like a 77 grain SMK or something along those lines. It, did well on paper, it checked all the boxes. But why does it sound like I have some reservations in my voice? Well, mainly just because I'm a skeptic. Uh, you may know that I'm not particularly open to new designs. And although this did well in this one test, 
Because it's an unconventional bullet design, it's difficult for us to extrapolate these results into other barrel lengths and different velocities and different ranges. At least more difficult than it would be if it were more conventional design. If I test a bonded soft point at one velocity and it does this one thing, you can usually kind of guess at what it might do at other velocities because we've seen a lot of testing from other bonded soft points. Even if a brand new company came out with a brand new bonded soft point, it's still going to perform kind of sort of in a similar manner to other bonded soft points. And the same thing goes for solid copper hollow points or open tip match or what have you. They're going to perform about the same as other bullets of that type of construction. That doesn't necessarily mean that I think that this is a bad design. It just means that I don't have enough information about it yet to extrapolate the results that I saw here into other cases. And of course, it's one single data point. Granted, it did well in this test, but I want to see a lot more testing before I fully embrace this projectile design. However, I'm highly optimistic that it will do well. If you have any questions or if you disagree, Leave a comment below. I always love to hear what you have to say about these things. If you want to find out how you can rent a high-speed phantom camera like the one that I used in this test for your own testing, check out the description. There's the contact information for Aimed Research in there. Get in touch with them and they will get you squared away. Have a great day.